sometimes they get encounter with certain children among their or in their families who are not being able to do anything on the very planet and they become burdened on the parents and sometimes they question the deity of god they question the existence of god they question the love of god they question the realness of god they question god simply because of what they're going through where did they go wrong why are these children go uh, suffering this way who provided these children that is exactly what sometimes they ask as well is it not god who provided this this cho these children skeptics also propound this question and whenever they try to propound this question they're trying to tell you that there is no god most children are like that they were born deaf they cannot hear what did they do wrong where did they go wrong Perhaps your parents watching or listening to me right now, you've, you've been encountering this kind of problem. You have your own encounters in life. Several many things are going on in your life and they push you into asking about the love of God. I greet you, dearie. And I welcome you to let the world know on Lawson TV. Today too, we've been granted another day for us to leave to see the sun tomorrow once again or in a day once again. Seriously, we need to be giving the thanks and glory to the Most High God. For He is our Kerber. He is the one who is taking control of anything that we're doing in our lives. For us to be able to attain salvation, He has provided a way by which we can be able to secure that. You know what? I may not know the situation you found yourself within right now. I may, I may not know the uh, current predicament you are wumbling yourself within. You know what? In whatever reality you may find yourself within, what you've got to understand is that they are happening to you simply because they have to happen that way. You know what? You need not to blame God on anything that is happening to you. You need not to blame God because we've been given our own choices under the sun. And sometimes there are several, several many things we entangle ourselves within that brings about whatsoever happens to us in life. You know what? Let me discuss this with you. Suffering. That's exactly what we are going to uh, reflect upon. Let's deliberate on suffering. And by expatiation or by generosity, what have I done to deserve this suffering? What have I done to deserve this suffering? As, as, as I earlier said, I may not know the kind of reality you, you found yourself within right now. Perhaps you are in prison. Perhaps you are on trial. Perhaps you are unable to defend yourself very well at the law court, and for that matter, you are in prison or you are in cells right now. It is very painful. Perhaps you are a devout Christian, but since you fall into this kind of attack of disease, seriously, you've been praying and praying and praying over and over, but yet it is still hurting you, it is still worrying you. And sometimes you throw your hands or your arms up in despair and tell yourself, Ah, what have I done? Why didn't I notice this from the, from, uh, from the start? Why have I indulged myself in this kind of situation? Simply because I'm following God or something like that. There's the exact reason several many people try to abnegate God and they try to reject any idea about God. They try to ignore the Bible itself simply because some people will tell you uh, they were devout Christians and sometimes maybe they were preaching and they had beatings from infidels. That is exactly what made them realize that if indeed I am preaching about Jesus Christ, I'm preaching about God and I was being beaten, I was under attack, they weren't able to rescue me from this kind of attack. It really means I'm, I'm wasting my time worshiping or serving them. I've heard uh, this from several many people who are claiming they are infidels right now, they are skeptics, or they are what atheists or something like that. What have I done to deserve this? Is the question on board. What have I done to deserve this? You know what? Suffering. Suffering is an agony. Probably you've heard about the agony of Christ what Jesus Christ went through when he came down here to do what is supposed to be done so as to save us. You know what? Jesus Christ gave us a pattern by which we can be able to secure salvation someday. 
He went through several many pains. He went through agony. He went through suffering. Suffering is an excruciation or state of acute pain. Pain is a subjective sensory and uh, an emotional experience. You really know what is what is worrying you. You understand what is going going on in your body. You understand what is going on in your life and all that. You understand what is what what is letting you or what is uh, pushing you to abnegate any idea about God. I do not I do not say you are not right in what you're doing, but I want you to think of it twice. Do you think God has just sanctioned that on you? No, God doesn't do that. He's not God of evil, but rather He loves each and every single individual on this very planet. Maybe you are in this simply because it has to happen that way. That is it. In any reality you found yourself within, what you've got to understand is that there are universal laws going on in every area of this very planet. Seriously, there are universal laws. And anything that we do, fancy, uh, if you steal from somebody, if you filch from somebody's pocket, or if you do anything, if you do anything wrong to a person and they try to retaliate, there is a universal law of retaliation. There is a universal law of cause and effect. There is the universal law of forgiveness. That is exactly what is greater than the law or the universal law of karma. So if people try to abuse all these universal, universal laws or supernatural laws, that, that's exactly what happens to them when they do that. If either you get hurt, either you get some effect in your body, or either you forgive, or either you live in hostility or something like that. That's exactly what is the reason backing whatever is going on under the planet. That is it. You know what? To deserve something is to merit the thing. That is to be worthy of, to be entitled to uh, uh, to certain things, etc. So when people propound this question, what have I done to deserve this question, uh, to, to deserve this suffering or this pain or something like that? What have I done to deserve this tragedy? What have I done to deserve this despair? Sometimes you are left in tense and an apprehensive mood. You'll be in your corner somewhere and you'll be sulking. And you'll be asking yourself, you'll be pitying yourself. And psychologically, there is a term, a creation ignobly. A creation ignobly, consenting means spiritedly. Sometimes you pity yourself. You'll be like, ah, I've been writing several many applications. But any time I try this, I do not get a job. And I've been praying over and over, and people have been taking money from me. I've been going here and there, and all that. I'm tired. God, are you there? Some pe sometimes people ask this question. God, are you really alive? Are you really there? Are we still on talking terms? Are you hearing? Are you seeing what I'm doing? Seriously, why are you not helping me? And for that matter, people tend to uh, turn out to be uh, prostitutes. Um, they turn out to be thieves and all that, simply because they thought God wasn't hearing their prayers. This isn't true. This isn't real. Certain things are real in life and you need to face them. Sometimes if you run away from a problem, seriously, you face it in the future. What you've got to do is to understand God. God has provided several many ways or a way by which you can be able to live peacefully on the red planet. If you really understand God, seriously, you will be patient in the situation you found yourself within and you're never going to do anything weird, anything that will blaspheme God's name or something like that. To deserve is to merit something. So when you ask that question, what have I done to deserve this? What have I done to merit this? What have I done to be worthy of this? What have I done to be entitled to these diseases? To be entitled to this COVID-19 or something like that. You've done nothing. Fancy what is going on currently in Ukraine and Russia. You know what? There are several many innocent souls. Several many Christians who are being damaged. Several many people are going through several many pains. But they've done, they've committed no error. They've done no, uh, they, they, they've done nobody wrong. But look at what is happening to them. And they'll be asking themselves sometimes, God, if you really are there, why are you not stopping the Russians? Why are you not stopping Putin? Why are you not stopping the Ukrainians from what? From damaging us with these bombs and all that. Seriously, there is the universal law or the supernatural law of what? Um, of gravity. That is exactly what helps a gun to, to penetrate through your body. That is exactly what allows a person to slap you. That is exactly what allows you to move uh, here or to and fro. That is it. Without this universal or supernatural law, seriously, if you threw anything up in the sky, it would remain still. It would never flop. That is it. it or it would never drop. 
This universal law or supernatural law allows these stuff to happen. God doesn't restrict anybody from doing anything they're doing because he doesn't remote control anybody. He doesn't determ determine anybody. We are free moral agent. We are able to decide between what is good and what is what, what is not good. We are able to choose to do what is good or what is not good. We are able to distinguish between moral right and moral wrong. So that is exactly why that is happening under the sun. So whenever these stuff happen, fancy death, injury, sexual violence, mal malnutrition, illness, disability, and all that. And most especially certain stuff that happens when war breaks up, uh, fancy post-traumatic uh, stress disorders, shortly PTSD, like depression and anxiety, which are emotional effects of war on innocent citizens. When this happens, skeptics ask this question, where is the all-loving God? Where is the omnipresent God? Where is the all-just God? Where is the all-kind God? Don't you see this? Don't you see what is going on under the sun? Why can't he halt this evil? This is exactly what skeptics ask. Most children are born handicapped. What I mean by handicapped children has to do with uh, are disabled children. Most children are born like that. They committed no evil. They did no evil. They committed no crime. But they were born handicapped. And the question is, what did they do wrong? That is exactly what sometimes also skeptics ask. Parents do ask this question. Uh, fathers do propound this question. Families do propound this question simply because sometimes they get encounter with certain children among their or in their families who are not being able to do anything on the very planet and they become burden on the parents and sometimes they question the deity of God they question the existence of God they question the love of God they question the realness of God they question God simply because of what they're going through where did they go wrong why are these children Go, uh, suffering this way. Who provided these children? That is exactly what sometimes they ask as well. Is it not God who provided this, this cho these children? Skeptics also propound this question. And whenever they try to propound this question, they're trying to tell you that there is no God. Indeed, if there was God, and maybe if a person should be going through some sufferings or pains or something like that, and it's because or as a, as a, it's as a result of those stuff, they entangle themselves within fancy, they sin or something like that. What about children? Children that uh, experiences this kind of disableness or this handicap at birth. Why are they going through that? What did they, what did they do wrong? Where did they, did, they, did they go wrong? Some children are mentally handicapped. Some people are physically handicapped. And some children are autistic. What I mean by autistic is they are affected with autism. They are abnormal, that is it, and they, 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 they have short, uh, short span, uh, short attention span, that is it. They cannot give you full attention. Sometimes when you speak to them, when you ask them, how are you, they'll be looking or they'll be glaring in your eye without being able to even respond. And they become burdens to their parents. You see, whenever even sometimes they're crossing the road, you will have to carry them on your arms or else they cannot be able to do that. And they become burdens. Sometimes like they collapse anyhow. And whenever their parents are, are bounded with people, seriously, they collapse and several many things happens to them that disgraces their family or disgraces the parents. And these uh, lose them into asking or questioning the deity of God or the love of God, the kindness of God. Why is this happening to me? Why are these happening to my children? Some children are also deaf. They are born deaf. And they are, what is it? That, that is what is called auditory aphasia, acoustic aphasia, where deafness deprived of the power of hearing. Most children are like that. They were born deaf. They cannot hear. What did they do wrong? Where did they go wrong? Perhaps your parents watching or listening to me right now, you've, you've been encountering this kind of problem. You have your own encounters in life. Several many things are going on in your life. And they push you into asking about the love of God. But you know what? Let's get on and I think you get to understand several many things. Most children are also born blind. Most children are born blind. They are partially sighted. Sometimes they, when they're looking at you, 
it will be like they're looking somewhere else and in tree they, they call it Mifemi baby and all that why the did these happen to these children where did they go wrong skeptics ask this question some are also having cerebral uh, cerebral uh, cerebral palsy brain damage etc considering all these and refusing to acknowledge the stubbornness of some partners of some, or of some parents about genetics about parental health and behaviors such as smoking and drinking during pregnancy uh, also stuff like complications during birth and again infections the mother might have during pregnancy or the baby might have very early in life and again exposure of the mother or child to high levels of environmental toxins such as lead uh, poisonous chemicals and chemical compounds physical materials that disrupt biological processes and organisms that causes diseases etc poverty and malnutrition skeptics rather blames god for these plights some children may encounter at birth some partners are very much stubborn some parents are very much stubborn they were stubborn they never heeded advice most of, most of the times when a, when people are getting into marriage when they, when they try to plan on cleaving they go to uh what is it advices or supervisors yeah they go to counselors and they will be advising them on what is going to happen to them sometimes they will have to go through some tests to verify whether they are compatible sometimes they find out they are not compatible but still they go by love or we love each other we have great passion for each other we know god is going to do it even though we are not compatible our bloods do not match and our, we are going to produce uh what is it uh disabled or han handicapped children and all that congender uh congenderic children or something like that but we know god is going to do it god with god all these things are possible seriously this is reality you are abnegating reality you abnegated it you ignored the truth that is exactly uh, that is exactly uh, that is the exactly uh, what is it? that is exactly why this is what happening to you that is it most partners were very much stubborn they never heeded advice that is the exact reason they are encountering currently what they are encountering perhaps if you listened to or if you had listened to the advices if you had listened to the counselors about your marriage seriously by now you would be enjoying in marriage seriously you are now having a playroom uh full of ankle biters but they are not worthy of your what of your happiness that is exactly what is going on right now so sometimes when you are blaming god what you have to do is to ask yourself what did i do where did i go wrong why didn't i heed advice why are my children suffering this way why am i going through this pain or something like that and you get to know the answer that is it people that's what they do or people do what they do simply because they think they've been given the will or the chance to do what they have to do that is it that is the exact reason we have atheists that is the exact reason we have days that is the exact reason we have agnostics that is the exact reason we have skeptics or uh, those that claim to be free thinkers or something like that they have their own choice they've chosen to go that way they've chosen to go that path or that trend that is it and no one uh, no, 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 no one questions them because God has allowed that. God, God has sanctioned that. He never remote control anybody. He never, um, uh, he, he, he never determines anybody. Anyone has been made as what a free moral agent, and you are able to dis determine for yourself. You can determine to do what is good or what is not good. That is it. So sometimes people go through some pains simply because of the uh the, simply because of this obedience or something like that perhaps you are also prone to ask looking at all these predicaments what have i done to deserve this parents siblings friends husbands wives do propound these questions as well let me give you this a uh, little information then we continue next time god had a good purpose bringing forth or designing the universe the world in which we live as humans god had a good purpose when he was bringing forth this universe god had a good purpose when he was creating this universe
when he was designing this universe. And do you know the implication? Do you know the deduction? Do you know the entailment? The entailment is that God designed the world for man. He designed the universe for man. He designed time and space for man. He designed the world for you and I. That is exactly what was the purpose of God. He was doing it for you and I. The world was made for us to live within. And God had no bad intention. Perhaps or probably the most formidable or excellent or impressive argument for the non-existence of God is the claim that there appear to, uh, to be many things in this world which are not in man's best interest. Let me give you an example. Uh, certain stuff like uh, certain uh, insects like housefly. What good purpose do these animals serve? They just disturbs, they just worries, they poisons our foods and all that they give, they are threatened, they threats our health on this very planet. What about mosquitoes? Have you ever had a mosquito bite? Sometimes when you're trying to sleep, they will never allow you to sleep. They will be playing some jingles in your ear, and if you do not take care, you even slap your wife, you slap your children, you slap yourself. What good purpose are these animals are serving? They are not in man's best interest, looking at all this. And what about snakes? What, what, what good purposes are snakes serving on the planet? When you see them, you have to take to your heels. When you see them, you have to run away because they're going to bite you. And when, when they are done biting you, seriously, certain thing is going to work. Be working out in your body and you die. They electri electrify your whole body. What about scorpions? What about all these uh, little, little insects? What are they doing? What about wild geckos? Seriously, they just, um, they just mess around in our rooms. What about mouse? What about mice? These are all stuff that are not in man's best interest. And for that matter, they ask, us, they, they ask themselves, or people do ask or propound this question, is God really all loving? If indeed God was all loving God, would he sanction all these stuff on the very planet? What about the killings, evil? If God was all powerful indeed as the attribute goes, wouldn't he be able to conquer evil? Wouldn't he be able to capture evil? Wouldn't he be able to eliminate evil? Why is evil on the very planet? This is exactly what we're going to grasp as we move on in this lesson. We're going to understand several many things and they're going to help us to be giving answers to every, every quibble the infidels drop. Much more seriously, why does evil exist in a world which uh, we believe an all-powerful, all-good God created. What is evil doing on this, on this very planet? Because we know that God is what? All-powerful, all-loving. And if indeed he is all-loving, why would he allow evil to be moving, uh, moving on freely on this very planet? This is exactly what we come in next time to deliberate on. Suffering causes several many people to reject God. And are they right? They are right in their own understanding. But further studies will prove to us that God doesn't sanction this. Those tragedies that are befalling man are very much painful. If, you, if, you, if you've encountered any tragedy in life, I say sorry. If you, if, you've, if, you've, if you are in any reality, fancy prison or something like that, I say sorry. But never blame God. You know what? You are within what you are within right now simply because God has allowed everybody to do whatever they want to do, but has provided a way by which a person can be able to attain or secure salvation. No matter where you may find yourself, you need to give glory and thanks and honor to God. You may go through some sufferings. You may, you may go through some pains. You may encounter some predicaments, some plights or something like that, but this doesn't really mean that God isn't caring about you. God isn't concerned about you. All these are happening simply because there is, um, God has what? Give, made you a free moral agent, can choose between what is good and what is what, what is bad. You may choose to do what is good. You may be a devout Christian, but somebody tried not to be good. Somebody chose the wrong path. And by that person's actions, you are in the situation you found yourself within right now. Sometimes you may drive safely, but the, that reckless driver will have to collide with your car. And what actually has happened to you right now is as a result of that reckless driving. You know what? 
this happens in this very universe or on earth simply because there are supernatural laws that are what? Backing anything that a person is doing. And they allow a person to be able to cause effect in your body. They allow, uh, some, some, uh, what is it? Something to be caused and uh, something to be affected. They allow something to be to, to be moving or something not to be moving or something like that. So, may God richly bless you. Keep on watching Lawson TV. And I think we're going to continue this and you're going to grasp several many things. Go to the subscribe button. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to invite all your friends. Tell them there are several many great lessons going on on Lawson TV. And also, you have to take your time and watch. And also... Uh, drop your comment on the comment section and again ring the bell as well may god bless you the numbers are emerging on the screen if you have any questions to propound you can contact me by these contacts bye bye <laughs> Mama Wakwa Baba Waha Construction Company Limited. Aha, you're using modern cost effective building technologies to build state of the art facilities. And yes, and so provide the separate ancillary services such as architectural drawings, landscaping, renovation, electrical installations, and now repairs. Yeah, your house management, plumbing, carpentry, masonry works, and the more come. Maybe you have a Wawa Queen to Mwana Wapida Wusidan. I hear one of Kodanda. Makam for Waha Construction Company Limited. It's a month. A Dinibi Repidi Sibira. So you school dun chapel dun restaurant from a waha construction company limited not to me that we'll be the camera demo say peda wash your demo one we'll wash your demo kept you my breath ever back i bet you would done so we're going to know next epd is wooden with central region ashanti region western region greater accra ghana baby ara when you're ringing the ever contact to one kululu bianye waha construction company limited woho yarati what then dear epd is here on your problem now yeah you're repairs you soon you're able to stop some woho 24 7 time being here when you're around a front one now you bet you do Waha Construction Company Limited wa Cape Coast, Kakum Do, Abra Jukwa Road in Udo, Waben Kakum MA Basic School, Abrosa No Bienna, Wawa First Floor, Ebutuma Frohun, 055 026 8598, email Waha Construction Limited at gmail.com, social media handles, Instagram, Twitter, and now LinkedIn on Waha Construction Limited, and now Waha Ghana on Facebook, Ebutuma visit to one website www.wahaconstruction.com, Waha Construction. No job too big, no job too small. Keep watching. Move on to Los and TV. Keep watching. Don't change it. Keep watching. Don't change it. Keep watching. Don't change it. And one day Los and TV.